Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my work about CMD non-primary infection during pregnancy, retrospective serological and molecular analysis in 47 patients. To begin, what do we know about non-primary infection? We know that as seroprevalence increases, the rate of congenital CMV infection increases. In countries like France, where seroprevalence is about 50%, half of congenital CMV infection follows maternal primary infection, and the other half follows maternal non-primary infection. And the risk of CKLA for congenitally infected neonates are the same regardless on maternal infection, primary or non-primary. And what don't we know about non-primary infection? We still don't know the transmission rate because we still have difficulties to diagnose non-primary infection with our serological tools. There are still legions that we could diagnose non-primary infection with increase of IgG titers, positive IgM, or positive blood, uh, PCR in blood. But this has never been fully explored, and importantly, we know that positive IgM and increase of IgG can be observed in immune um, non-specific stimulation of the immune system, which has nothing to do with non-primary infection. So, maternal non-primary infection diagnosis is a real challenge for virologists and for systematic screening policies during pregnancy. Our study population was composed on 48 infected neonates following systematic neonatal screening or because of symptomatic fetal infection. And they were born from 47 pregnant women with non-primary infection during pregnancy. We defined non-primary infection as um, congenital CMV infection with positive IgG with a high ability index before 10 weeks of gestation or CMV zero positivity known before pregnancy. And we defined increase of IgG titers as a doubling of titers. We performed serology and PCR on serum samples because um, this was the only uh, samples available retrospectively. And we had a median of four serum samples per pregnant women with one serum in the first trimester, one in the second trimester, and two samples in the third trimester. And on each serum sample, we investigated whether there was increase of IgG titers, positive IgM, and positive PCR. And we obtained this profile. For 57% of patients, in red on the back, we had stable IgG, negative IgM, and negative PCR in all serum samples. And for 43% of patients, in yellow on the back, we had at least one serum sample with increase of IgG titers and or positive IgM and or positive PCR. And from the 43% of patients with at least one serum sample with a possible marker of non-primary infection, we collected 86 serum samples. And for 63%, we had either increase of IgG or positive IgM or positive PCR. And for 
percent of these samples, we had two of these markers, and no one had the three markers. So IgM and PCR positivity were transient during pregnancy. To conclude, our serological tools are unuseful to diagnose non-primary infection, and we should not um, perform IgM prospectively if we want to diagnose non-primary infection during pregnancy. 34% of patients had at least one serum sample with a positive PCR with very low viral load with a median of 46 copies per milliliter. One limit of our study is that we perform PCR once per trimester and we can imagine it could have been positive if performed monthly. Of course, a positive PCR signs the non-primary infection, but this is not sensitive enough and a negative PCR cannot rule out the diagnosis. We had a quick look on pregnancy issues and four pregnant women uh, gave birth to uh, symptomatic infected neonates and three of these had at least one marker of non-primary infection, but this is too, uh, too small effective to drive any conclusion. To conclude, non-primary infection diagnosis is not compatible with maternal systematic screening with our usual surgical tools. And if we want to diagnose all congenital CMV infection, we have to perform systematic neonatal screening. And I really thank you for your attention.